Hi guys, welcome to my first Unity tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a top-down controller using Unity's new input system in a way that avoids problems that I've encountered when trying to use rigid bodies. First, I'll quickly show you what the problem is. This is a demo project I've set up in which the player is set up using a rigid body. As you can see, when the player hits the wall, it doesn't stop immediately. Rather, it goes slightly into the wall before stopping. I'll show you that again. So the solution that I've implemented is to not use rigid bodies at all and instead do some very simple collision checking using ray casts and change the magnitude of the velocity depending on the ray cast hit information. To get started, let's open up a new Unity project. Once our project's open, the first thing we need to do is open up the package manager and install the input system. So let's go to Window Package Manager and find the input system. You can find it by searching input up the top. Click to install it. I've already installed it. And once that's done, I'll go back to the scene view. Here, I'll go Assets, Create. Down here, we have a new input actions. I'll type in player controls and click check the generate C sharp class box. Now click edit asset and make a new action map called in game. In here, I'll rename this action over here to be right horizontal movement. And the action type will be passed through with control type of vector2. We can delete this no binding and click the plus and add to the vector composite. We'll call this WASD. Up can be W, down will be S, left will be A, and right will be D. We can add another 2D vector composite for arrow keys. This is just to demonstrate the capabilities of the input system. So up will be up arrow, down will be the down arrow, left will be the left arrow, and right will be the right arrow. Click save asset, and once that's done, we can close that. Right, now under assets, I'm going to create a new folder and call that scripts. In here, we'll need two scripts. The first one will be an input manager. And the second one will be the motor. Now we just need to give those a moment to load, and then we'll open those up in Visual Studios. Right. Once Visual Studios is loaded, we'll first go over to the motor class, and in here we'll need two variables. The first one will be a float, we'll call speed, we'll just set that to 9 for now. And the second one will be a vector 3, target velocity. Alright, so once we have those, we'll need a public method called it'll be void, and it will be set velocity. We'll take an input type of vector2. Took vector2 and we'll call that input. So in here, all we need to say is if the input is not equal to vector2.0, then target velocity is equal to vector3. forward multiplied by input dot y plus vector three dot right multiplied by input dot x. If it is not if it is vector two dot zero, so else target velocity is equal to vector three dot zero. And then we'll multiply target velocity, so target velocity is times equal to time dot delta time 
multiplied by speed. Alright, so that's it for that function. And the only other function we'll need in here is an update. So void update. In here is where we'll be doing our collision checking. But the first thing we need to do is check that if target velocity is equal to vector three is equal to vector three dot zero, we can just return because we won't be moving anywhere. If it is not equal to vector three dot zero, we'll get a raycast hit info. Call this hit info. And then a vector three adjusted player position. And this will be equal to the position of the player. So transform dot position plus vector three dot up. This is just to ensure that the collision check doesn't collide with the ground. And finally, a float for collider radius is equal to get component type of capsule collider dot radius. Right, so now for the collision checking, first we'll check if the player is not moving diagonally or not trying to move diagonally. So we'll go if target velocity dot x is equal to zero or target velocity dot z is equal to zero. So this means that the player is trying to move only forward and backwards or left and right, not diagonally. Then we'll say if physics dot line cast adjusted player position will be the start point and the end point will be adjusted player position plus collider radius multiplied by the target velocity and target velocity and if that is true that means that it did hit something we'll set the target velocity equal to target velocity dot normalized dot normalized multiplied by hit info dot distance minus collider radius so hit info oh sorry so physics dot line cast at the end of that we need to put out hit info right so that if the player is not trying to move diagonally if they are so else We'll need to check right and left movement and forward and back movement separately. So we'll go vector 3, target velocity x is equal to vector 3 dot right multiplied by target velocity dot x. If physics dot line cast adjusted player position adjusted player position plus collider radius multiplied by target velocity x plus target velocity x and we'll go out hit info so if that's true then target velocity x is equal to target velocity x dot normalized multiplied by hit info dot distance minus collider radius and next we'll check if it's going to collide going forward and backwards so actually I'll just copy and paste this entire section I'll change target velocity x to tar target velocity z z vector 3 dot forward multiplied by target velocity dot z physics dot line cast adjusted player position plus collider radius times target velocity c plus target velocity z and then target velocity z equals target velocity z dot normalized and the rest of that's all fine and at the end of here we'll just say target velocity is equal to target velocity x plus target velocity z now outside this if else statement, so just in the update, we can say transform dot position plus equals target velocity. 
and that should, oh, sorry, not, not equals plus equals target velocity, and that should all be working. So now we'll head over to the input manager, and in here we'll need a player controls, I'm just going to call that controls, a player controls dot in game actions, we'll call that in game, a motor to move the player with, and a vector to for the movement input. So in the awake function, we'll say motor is equal to get component type of motor. Controls is equal to new player controls. And in game actions is equal to controls dot in game. So now to enable these controls, we also need to have an on enable and on disable function. So on enable, on disable. And in here we'll just simply say controls dot enable and controls dot disable now back in the awake function we'll say in game dot horizontal movement to get a reference to our horizontal movement from earlier dot performed plus equals ctx for context and then equals an arrow sign for movement input is equal to context dot read value type of vector 2 and what this does is just take the input from the player controls and tr translate that into a vector 2 and store it in our movement input variable so now from there we can make an update function and in there say motor dot set velocity and remember we had an input in there so we'll just pass in movement input and that should all be working so let's head over back to the project, right click in the hierarchy and we'll add a plane. I'll call that ground and set the scale to 3, 3 on the X and Z. I'll change the camera position to be 15 on Y minus 15 on Z and the X rotation to be 55. And then I'll create a 3D object capsule and call that player. Now to this player, I'll set its position to 1 on the Y so that it's standing on the ground, and I will add these two scripts that we just created to it. And let's test it, so let's hit play. Hitting WSD, we can move around. Using the arrow keys, we can also move around. Now let's stop the playing and I'll add some obstacles and see if it's fixed our problem from before. So I'll add, let's see, playing, turn that minus 90 on Z and move it across that way. Let's just zoom in over here so we can get real close. And let's try that. You can see, and okay, that is not working as it should be. So, okay, I know what the problem is. I had forgotten to, over here, in collider radius multiplied by target velocity, that should be dot normalized. And the same for times target velocity dot x dot normalized. And target velocity dot z dot normalized. Now let's try that again. Let's hit play and move into the wall. You can see that it works perfectly. It doesn't move into the wall at all. You move along it, and it works. That's the end of this tutorial. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.